the exciting television series that brings you each week the actual films of colorful adventures in all parts of the world, the golden journeys of real people. Thank you very much. Tonight we go on a safari through the wild game country of Africa with a husband and wife who had opposite ideas. Now, Mr. Weir McDonald wanted a vacation of hunting and roughing it. Mrs. McDonald, on the other hand, wanted to rest at a resort hotel with luxury service. Well, the McDonalds show us tonight their attempt to settle this family argument. They went all the way to Africa to do it and got the adventure of their lifetime on a safari of amazing luxury. We're going to start right after these few words from our sponsor. Weir McDonald is an adventurous type of person who likes the thrill of hunting and roughing it in wild country. On the other hand, Mrs. McDonald feels that a vacation is a time for luxury and good service. It seemed impossible to combine these opposite ideas at the same time, and what the McDonald's did about it is what makes our adventure tonight truly unusual, taking us as it does into the heart of Africa on a luxury safari. Now, let me introduce this imaginative couple to you, Mr. and Mrs. Weir McDonald of Eugene, Oregon. How are you, Mrs. McDonald? How are you, sir? Well, Mr. McDonald, you wanted to go to Africa and rough it. Mrs. McDonald wanted a uh, luxury safari. How did you compromise? Well, Jack, Mrs. McDonald was really responsible for the way we worked out the compromise. Uh, she likes luxury resorts. I don't care for them. I like hunting, mountain climbing, and photography. So you went on a luxury safari. Well, we combined the likes of the, of the two and put them together, and that was the luxury safari. I see. Well, now, Mrs. McDonald, do you think your husband did a pretty good job of adhering to your whims, shall we say? Oh, yes, Jack, a wonderful job. Royally treated, were you? Beautifully treated. Uh-huh. Well, let's find out for ourselves as we take a look at your adventurous trek through Africa, which we've entitled Luxury Safari, and here it is. Our adventure takes place here in Central Africa, and tonight Mrs. McDonald will tell us the story. Jack, big day has come, and I am in for many surprises. We take to the truck over Belt and over the Arroyos and Dongas. Our first stop was at a compound where a native dance had been arranged for us by our white hunter. These are the Wakumbas. And here we have the women in their native dress. They put on all of their beads and all their finery for me. Notice these anklets that they have on. I'm trying now to get some of the girls to look into the camera. They're a little camera shy. Listen, this is one of the chief's wives that is preparing a meal for us. They're beautiful girls, really. The kitties over in Africa are just like the ones we have at home. They're full of mischief, and they have their tears, but they're soon dried when we give them the licorice that we had brought along for them. Ah, oh, they're cute kids. So they laugh with us and watch the dance. This dance will go on for several hours. It's a tribal dance and tells the folklore. We now are off again over the rough terrain. We're at all times working with his camera. The giraffe are curious. We would see herds of 15 to 20 to 30 at a time. Then we will come upon perhaps 100 to 200 ostriches. We call them the ballet girls of Africa. Great herds of the plains animals, the wildebeest. Well, Mrs. McDonald, there's Hemingway's Africa, all right. Zebra, the topi. And Jack, these are the little Thompson's gazelle. This is the Rhone, the second largest antelope in Africa. And this is the Eland, the largest antelope in Africa. The Cape Buffalo, one of the dangerous five. He's an ugly brute. We're always careful when we're around them. The wildebeest again in great herds. We're, uh, I say at all times, is out there with his camera. And what a thrill it was when we saw our first lion. It's no wonder they call him king of the jungle. We were fortunate in finding a leopard in a tree. A leopard is again one of the dangerous five, and the leopard is 
the only animal of Africa that kills just for the fun of killing. Ooh. Our first elephant. He's a fine specimen. There were about 60 elephant in this donga. As we were driving along in the truck, we'd frightened this herd of Cape Buffalo, and we took a slow motion picture of them. We travel on and finally come to the spot, and I'm I delighted to see our first camp. Our 18 men go to work. Each man knows his job, and he does it well. It's only a little while until all the camp is in place, and at the same time, all the curious little animals come to meet us and greet us. There goes one. I'm out working with my camera, too. The zebras were a pretty little fellow. My camp, isn't it a pretty spot, Jack, there? The boys have cleaned it out so nicely. Our table water, of course, is filtered and purified. And then, oh, how wonderful it was to have that bath. This bathtub travels with us. You see it all times. I have to take care of my hair over there, just like I do at home. This little baboon comes out to watch the gun bearer's chimp that I have with me there in the chair. The gun bearer had trained him, and that little chimp gets into all kinds of mischief. Notice how this other baboon is watching, and I think one could practically have taken him along with us and trained him. Kamau is filling the charcoal iron to do the ironing. Puts the crease and wears trousers. He's beautifully groomed, I think even better over there than at home. The cook does all of his cooking over the open fire. The boys put on quite a little fancy costume when they service our meals. We may have a buffalo tongue, or we could have Arby fillets. Sometimes it was an excellent curry that was prepared. The meals were very good. That first night in the jungle is an experience Jack you will never forget. The noises increase as regular quarrel society. I really was a little frightened. And I think everyone tells the same story that has been over there. It takes you a long time to get used to it. And the noise increases, and finally I asked where if he wouldn't please do something about it. He tries to reassure me and tell me it's all right, but I truly felt that this elephant was going to come right into the tent. Finally, Weir decides that he will get out and try to frighten them off. Out goes the pail, and the animals do scatter, and now we are in hopes that we will have a few hours of quiet sleep. Morning comes only too soon. At five o'clock, they awaken us there every morning with a nice pot of hot tea. And our boots are always shined. We really are a well-groomed pair of McDonald's. We're orders our breakfast. He's ordering now two eggs. That's what we generally have at home for breakfast. But are we amazed when we see the size of the eggs in Africa? I should say so. After breakfast, Weir starts out to make a little reconnaissance over the terrain, and I decide that morning that I'll remain back in camp with Coco. As I said, Coco is the trained champ of the gun bearer. He's an awfully affectionate little fellow. Jack, this lion, is stalking a meal, and by instinct, all the plains animals become alerted. I don't blame them either, Mrs. McDonald. You notice how all the animals are scampering away. Instinct tells them that danger is near. The jackal will follow wherever they see the lion going out. They know that soon there will be food. The vultures, of course, are always standing by. Contrary to belief, 90% of the time, the lioness makes the kill for the male. And she waits until her lord and master has had his fill. And then she steps in and has her part of the meal. The zebra run, you'll find all of the animals very cognizant of what's taking place. 
And these little warthog become alerted when they sense the lionesses out there. Notice their little tails. They're like an antenna. And the scavengers are waiting patiently. The lioness has spotted a warthog that she feels will make a good, tasty morsel. The lioness brings off this kill for her cubs and for her mate that is there in the deep grass. And these are the wild dog. They're always glad to be able to get what the lioness or the lion will leave from their meal because um, they don't want to work for a living and they'll take what is left over by the lion. The vulture stands by, is in the tree, always waiting. And when the lion finishes the meal, the hyena moves in. And this old fella, you can see he's happy. He's had his great repast, and now he's getting prepared to uh, have a little siesta. The jackal and the hyena. The hyena is starting in to carry the carcass away. The jackal will follow because what the hyena leaves, the jackal will take. And then the vultures will come in by the hundreds. And within a half an hour, all of this will all be cleaned up. You'll never know that there was a kill had taken place here. And here are three beautiful lions. Weir is now stalking all these lions. You notice how these animals can be hidden there in the deep grass, Jack. That's one reason I wasn't allowed out of camp. Unless there was someone with me with a gun, because it's so easy to come across a lion that is hidden there. Jack, you know the lion does kill 100 animals during the year. They are killers, aren't they? Weir is now stalking his animal. Weir moves in closer through the deep grass. Takes good, sure aim. And down comes one lion that will never make another kill. Lion Day is a great day in camp. The natives are always glad when one more lion is gone. And now, Jack, we break camp. We're going into elephant country to see what adventure awaits us there. Now well, let's return to tonight's adventure, Luxury Safari, and here once again is Mrs. Weir McDonald of Eugene, Oregon. We're having a little trouble getting over the road. This must be the unluxury part of the trip. Then we come across this beautiful elephant. There are about 30 or 40 in this herd. Notice this fellow here with just the one tusk. Now, Jack, out of this donga comes a little baby elephant. Can you imagine Weir's amazement? Wherever there's a baby, there's bound to be a mother. So Weir looks hurriedly to see what's coming around the corner. And then, of course, he tries to talk the little fellow into going back because we have no place or use for a little pet like that in our camp. So he hurries him back to his mother, and uh, then Weir comes back to camp to tell me about this. I, of course, am fascinated with his story, because it's very unusual that this should happen. And as he's sitting there telling me this, we notice that the baboons are running right past us and that something is happening. And believe it or not, right out of this donga comes this baby elephant that Weir had seen. It's just unbelievable. The little fellow came just as fast as he could right into camp. Friendly as could be. I'm sure a human hand had never touched him before. The boys at the camp got us some carrots and we fed him. He's a cute little character. We took his bath and the little fellow thought it was his own water hole and so he came up for a drink. throws a little bit of water on him, but we knew that we couldn't keep him around there because uh, it really was dangerous. So finally, we got the boys to take the little fellow down to the donga so it could work its way back to the mother. Now we go out scouting and photographing for elephant. 
came across a herd here. There are about 10 or 15 here. Elephant must have its water. Water is necessary not only for drinking, but for the bath. And then after it has the bath, it will spray itself with mud so as to protect it from the insects and the bugs. Here's a fine specimen of a bull elephant, Jack. Now we were just as close, I'll tell you, as we wanted to be. What a tremendous beast, magnificent, really. Going down the Tana River. The Tana River's filled with hippos, ugly brutes. I certainly agree. Notice the tick birds here. The tick bird is always with the hippo. It protects the hippo from the insects and also alerts the hippo to danger. As we came back, the natives have come in with their herd of cattle. These are domestic uh, animals, goats. There are also camels in this herd. This is a little dugout canoe, in which we play around in the water. These are crocodiles. That's an ugly brute that comes down. Isn't he an ugly fellow? A native chief going by with these two wives. And now you're at a watering place, is that right? But there aren't any certain spots in the river where they can come down to the water. Flamingos by the hundreds. Beautiful sight to see. In the little town of Tabora. A town of about 20,000, 500 of these are whites. And the rest are East Indians and blacks. There's only one well in this town that gives water for these 20,000 people. And the native tailor has his little machine right there on the street. And the tailor had a cheetah. Cheetah can become domesticated. They train them as trackers, use them over there as we use a hunting dog. We're having a little trouble with our trucks, but it doesn't take long for our native boys to get us on the road again. We come across Leaping and Paula. Aren't they beautiful? My, they certainly are beautiful. They're just like ballet dancers, aren't they? They will leap 35 feet in one jump, Jack. Beautiful, graceful animal to watch. I think these are my favorite shots in your film, Mrs. McDonald. This is the Tetsi control. The Tetsi is the fly you know that carries sleeping sickness, Jack. And it takes us about an hour and a half before they would be able, with their little butterfly nets, to get these flies off our truck. He's here put on a dance for us, and all these men have as a headdress a lion skin. This lion has been killed by the spear of the hunter. It's sort of what the teenagers would call a jungle rock and roll. These native women, all of their heads are shaven. They're really quite beautiful bells there in their own compounds. And truly, under such conditions with a shaved head, uh, it takes great beauty for a woman to be beautiful under those conditions. Their dance is quite rhythmic. And the children learn it from the time they're just about two or three. The boys are put into these um, clothes and they use um, quite a colorful makeup. It's another part of the lion skin that is around the ankle there. We're going out and um, scout the terrain for uh, rhino because we're now in rhino territory. The rhino, you know, is again one of the dangerous five of Africa. And here is a great big brute. Those birds in the foreground are guinea hens. They make very good eating. We'd often have them on our table. Three rhino that we came upon getting a little closer there for a better picture. The rhino, though, is alerted as soon as they um, heard the camel. The rhino has a very keen sense of hearing, but he does not see well. As we're 
Peter's photographing here, um, the rhino become curious. At first, we think there's going to be a charge, and then um, the rhino changed their mind, and we played around there with the camera for uh, quite a while. They're fascinating creatures to watch. Oh, I wouldn't like to stay there very long. You're never quite sure when it, it's really going to be a charge. It certainly looks like an ugly brute, built just like a tank. Suddenly, look at this, as we're there, another rhino and her baby come out and charge we're. And if that boy didn't make a dash for the truck, it really was a most exciting moment. And I think the biggest thrill that we're had. Where is out with a gun. getting into position and taking a sudden and careful aim. There is the specimen that is now in Weir's trophy room. It weighed two ton. The Lois shirts that Weir gave to the boys as a parting gift. The boys love them. And now Weir and I are saying goodbye to Africa, an experience of a lifetime and a thrill I will never forget. seeing your fun, I'd say that you had more luxury in Africa than most of us have here at home. But tell me, now how about those ostrich eggs, really? Did you actually eat those? <laughs> that was kind of a gag. But well, they did serve them, and they're strong and very filling. Mr. McDonald, are you planning another trip like the luxury safari in the near future? Yes, I am, Jack. We have plans completed for a shikar in India next year. And then, uh, in addition to that, we are now working on plans for another safari in Africa. I would call that being very, very fortunate and lucky. Uh, now, I know that a lot of photographers are always talking about the big shot that got away, just as a lot of fishermen talk about the big ones that got away. Was, was there any particularly thrilling moment uh, on this luxury safari when you regretted that a camera wasn't handy? There certainly was, Jack. One evening, about uh, 1.30 a.m., uh, there was a tremendous noise and, uh, and shuffling and loud breathing right through the canvas of our tent. Uh, we awakened. I grabbed my gun and was at bay, and it was a huge hippo that almost took our tent with us as he went on his way to water. It certainly was a thrilling incident while it lasted. I can sincerely imagine it would be, something that would have frightened me to death in all probability. You've both been so very, very charming. I hope that when you get back to Oregon before proceeding on your next trip, you'll say hello to all of our friends up there for us. Thank you very, very much, Mr. and Mrs. Weir McDonald of Oregon, USA. Mm -hmm.